there's a lot going on here that's not normal. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. I apologize for the huge break between videos, but as you guys can tell, Cassie and I have been extremely busy. This is the first video inside of the new shop. There's still a lot of work to be done, but there's a lot I need to catch you guys up to speed on. And we have a few other things to do in this video as well. We have a, a, a few shop projects to do in this video, and we also have some Jeep projects too. But first, we got the Trail Dash 3 from Super Chips. This is gonna be going in the Gladiator. Kind of check out some of the features of this. This is a, uh, a tuner and a programmer. It comes with a monitor. It's gonna be really, really sweet. We also have to do a PCM swap for that. We're gonna talk about that later. We have some new LED shop lights to replace just these current shop lights. We're gonna install some of those, see how that turns out. And we also have an Apple CarPlay dongle. So this is gonna turn our like our radio system into a full like tablet. This should be plug and play, but we should be able to watch videos, Netflix, YouTube, all that stuff inside of our Gladiator radio. And I'm about to head over to Mike's to drop off a trailer and we're gonna pick up some barrels and make some Vortex burn barrels for the property here. So we have a lot to do. Let's head over to Mike's, get those barrels, and then we'll start checking out some of these Jeep upgrades. Man, you've been busy, haven't you? Oh yeah. So we showed the uh, the project YJ for Crossbar in uh, the last video, but a lot has changed. So we got some new sliders from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. Mike actually went ahead and uh, went ahead and got them installed. The uh, install form when you mismatch Barnes and you know your Gen Ride or your Poison Spider. The interference between the corner armor and the uh, the sliders. What'd you do? So if you didn't chamfer this down this wouldn't seat all the way up on the tub. And then the other thing I had to do was I had to, I had to modify the front for the uh, tube fenders. But that happens when you're doing mixing companies and everything. Sometimes some custom fabrication is needed, but honestly, it looks like it was very easy to modify and it turned out really good. Barnes also sent a nice winch mount. It's gonna sit just like this, very similar, but this winch mount is gonna sit below the frame. So that's all gonna get recessed down. I think that's gonna be its own video. Fairly, it'll come right through here, through the pocket. That way you can just still shut the tailgate. Yep. Oh, I didn't even show them that yet. Uh, there's a uh, nice little Wilton, a hitch mount vise. So, you know, there's no hitch here, but this is the storage for it. And it, yeah, you added a, uh, a receiver up here to the bumper. So on the trail, if you need to change a U-joint, you can pop that vise right in there, swap it out, because this is the ranch's recovery vehicle. Oh, we got a lot going on on that. We got a Barnes flat cross member skid plate here. It's gonna have to get cut up for the 205 and then rebraced underneath. There's a lot going on with this that it's gonna be hard to show you and explain it without actually being under the YJ. Barnes makes top notch products, stuff like this. When you're doing fabrication, you need something easy to modify and these Barnes steel skid plates and all of their products are easy to modify and make for whatever you need in your vehicle. We'll get it bolted up and then we'll take a picture before we start plating it up. Let's get started on this barrel. This is how the uh, skid plate's gonna sit. Build a drop for the flat skid plate. And then this is where the fabrication's gonna have to get funky. The front drive shaft is not gonna clear this. There's a lot going on here that's not normal. But that is it over here. We have the burn barrel completed. We're gonna test out later tonight. Uh, pretty much you just drew a half circle up there and then a little V check mark down on there. And then the inside, you have the half cuts right there. We're gonna elevate this off and we'll test it out. So. That was it, we're gonna carry this home. There's a few more burn barrels we have to make later. Mike's gonna borrow the plasma cutter, but that's it, dude. Yep. Now that we're back in the shop, I am dying for a Jeep upgrade. It has been a long time since I've worked on my own Jeeps or done any modifications or upgrades at all. We have the Trail Dash 3 from Super Chips right here. I've actually had this since back in Texas, but I never got around to putting it in. And I kinda wanted to make a video to show the new cool features of the Trail Dash 3. So you should be familiar with Super Chips. They've had the Trail Dash 2. I ran that in the JK, made a video on it, loved it. Not only was like the performance nice, but having this handheld display was just phenomenal. I love looking at gauges, I love looking at temperatures, and having it right there was really neat. So I'm excited to have it in the Gladiator. Now, the Trail Dash 3 is a little bit different. They added some features, some off-road stuff that we'll show you later in this video. If your Jeep's a 2015 and newer, you're gonna have to do an ECM swap, which is absolutely free because it's part of the Trail Dash 3 package. But this is what's gonna allow us to actually use the tuning function of this Trail Dash 3. Now, looking at the dyno charts, the Trail Dash 3, it seems like they were able to squeeze out a good amount of power and torque 
with their tune. Now on my personal Jeep, there's no huge performance upgrades that have been done. You know, we have the AFE cold air intake, the full AFE exhaust, that's headers, catalytic converters, mufflers, everything. So hopefully it should wake up a little bit with this Trail Dash 3 tune. But there, like I said, there's a lot of other features. I just rambled a long time. We're gonna test it out. We're gonna get it installed. It comes with instructions. Can't be too hard, right? I went ahead and put everything on the table just to make sure I have everything here. But as you can tell, we have the handheld, we have the OBD2 port, we have the mount, some stickers, the security gateway, the bypass module, and we also have the PCM. Now, normally you don't get the PCM yet in this process, but for the video, I went ahead and got my numbers. I went ahead and like requested the PCM swap. But the first few steps is to plug in our security bypass module. It tells us where that is, get our tuner hooked up, get this in, and then follow instructions, get everything updated, and then install our new PCM. Now, before we pop this bad boy in, we need to make sure we disconnect the battery completely, which means on the JLs and JTs, we have two batteries. So we're gonna disconnect our positive, our negative, as well as the negative bus bars over here. So we're gonna disconnect this, isolate it, as well as this one too, I think. I think on the JLs and JTs, they're different. And then we can get access to removing our old PCM. We're gonna have to remove the intake out of the way, unbolt the old one, bolt this new one in, and then hopefully she fires up. Last night, I finished up the Super Chips install and we are gonna test it out soon. But today, it is time to install a brand new two post lift here in the shop. So I haven't talked about this, but we have two in here. One's Mike's, one's mine. We're gonna take a look at it here in a minute. Let's go meet up with this installer and get some lifts installed today. We're out at the burn barrel, got the lift going in inside the shop and we have electric getting installed running up to the shop. But the burn barrel, Mike fired it up, started throwing some scraps in there. Figured yep. we'd show you guys what uh, what it turned out to be like. And I, I mean, there's really not even, there's not that much stuff in there and it's huge. We figured out uh, the more you open the holes up, uh, it allows the ashes to come out the bottom and then the bigger the holes are, the harder the vortex is going up. So oh, yeah. really, you're talking five foot of flame out the top of the barrel. But yeah, the bigger, the bigger holes definitely let more airflow in there. And you can't tell it on the GoPro, but like, it's spinning a little bit. I have been waiting for the electrical for quite a while. It's been about two months since we originally put the order in, uh, but they're laying out the PVC. It's a pretty long run that goes all the way over to the telephone pole or electric pole in front of the house. They're over there starting to dig over there. So now we're gonna have full power to the shop, which is gonna be amazing. Well, I thought it was gonna be that easy. So yesterday turned out to be quite a day. There were a ton of things that went wrong. So luckily the electrical is now ran. However, they ran into quite a few issues. We hit an old water line that had some point in time ran to the shop. They also hit the electrical line that was running from the house feeding the shop. So they hit that. They hit the water line that I didn't even know about, which is pretty cool, but useless now. But we had to stop installing the lift and they had to stop working on the electrical. Luckily, the electrical is supposed to be out here today to finish hooking up power to the shop, but the lift is in. We have a lot to talk about. I haven't talked about the lifts at all. I've been very absent on the channel. I gotta catch you guys up to speed. We have one side in uh, over here in the concrete. He anchored all of that and we were gonna start that side and that's when we lost power. Let's back it up for one second. So the lifts, Mike actually found a deal here local in town, a lift reseller had an incredible deal on these forward I-10 lifts. I don't know why they were so cheap. I, I think they were just kind of clearing inventory. I don't know if they were going out of business or what, but they were an incredible price, brand new, practically half off 10,000 pound two post lift. So of course we scooped up the deal. Mike got one, I got one, and there were like four other sales uh, from some of Mike's buddies. The reason I kind of placed it caddy cornered here in the shop, uh, the, the main reason is because this is an extremely tall lift. My ceiling height is about 12 feet. So of course we're gonna be limited by the trusses on this building. So instead of doing like intense truss modifications by putting it straight sideways, I decided to angle it a little bit because I think we're gonna get a little more clearance on the front and back of the vehicle and we might only have to notch out a little bit of the truss. Plus, if you are putting it on a foundation or slab that you're kind of unsure about. I know mine is six inches, I measured it, but I don't know how old this is or how structural it is. So we really wanna stay away from these cracks 
like crack over there, these expansion joints, or if they're cuts, really whatever it is, you wanna stay six inches away from that. And so if I was gonna put that on this side, it would be extremely close to that bay. And my plans were to have another workbench here so we could work on this side of a vehicle. So I think angling it did make sense. We can still fit a vehicle in here to work on it but I'm excited for it. Now, of course, yesterday without power, we had to come to a halt on the install of the lift, but today I have a 220 generator here. Mike had that, and I broke out my Northern generator that I got for Christmas over here, the powerhouse. That was actually from Cassie's dad, great present. Rigged it up, tied it into the old input to the shed from the house, and when I turn that on, it now feeds the lights at least, and the outlet. So the lift guy is here on the way. I'm gonna knock out this lift today. Hopefully we get power soon. The guy installing the lift didn't really wanna be filmed and I have to respect that because he's here to do a job and not to make YouTube videos. See you guys soon. Later that night, the electric company came out and finished up the job and we now have full power to the shop. So I've been busy wiring everything up for the lift, switching all of the lighting and receptacles over to the new power box. I went ahead and converted the old stuff over here to standalone lighting and outlet breakers and added a 220 panel or a 220 uh, breaker and ran that along over here. Went ahead and put in two outlets side by side or on top of each other so we can have both of these plugged in. We can have a plasma cutter, a welder, or just have something to, you know, run to whatever we want. And then ran it up over here to the lift. Now there's still a lot of there's still a lot of room in the electrical box and there's still a lot of other electrical upgrades I'm gonna do in the future. But for now, the lift is finally working. <laughs> Beautiful, so I'm super excited about that and I wasn't even planning to do this in the video Now the reason that I didn't install this is because I've never installed a lift and In order to stand this up. I would have had to probably rent a forklift or some type of tractor And honestly the guy wanted 500 bucks. That was a pretty good uh, a really really good deal Honestly because he is insured he has a business all of that great stuff. So it turned out really good I didn't have to bother with it, plus Cassie over there being quiet, really wanted a professional to do it, and I don't blame her because we're gonna be in here lifting the Jeeps up, and uh, safety is definitely Thank a big factor always. when it comes to, to vehicle lifts. That was definitely unplanned for this video. I know we had talked about doing a lot of other stuff in this video, such as the Trail Dash 3, the CarPlay system, and of course the electrical upgrades, or the, uh, the lighting upgrades, which definitely still needs to be done. I'm not a big fan of that. Now we need a lighting upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> so we're, we're gonna change that out. I have a lot to show you the next video as well, but I really wanna put out some kind of content. I know it's been a long time, but as you can tell, things are moving and slowly, um, we're gonna start putting out more content on a weekly basis for sure, because there's just so many moving parts and a lot of things are happening. A lot of projects. Cassie's over there. She has a secret, Alan, but coming. it's coming. So. I think for this video, we're gonna end it a little bit soon. The Trail Dash 3 has been amazing. I've actually been driving that around for probably a week now. Yeah, we really um, wanted to take it off-roading with Yeah, it. I think the best way to show you guys all the features of it is to take it off-road, take the Jeep off-road, take the Gladiator uh, off-road, yeah, test out the Trail Dash 3. I will show you guys this real quick. Uh, we're gonna come back to that in another video, but so far it's been really good with the tune and of course, everything else. We'll dive into that later in, uh, in the next video. I said that three times, so. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna talk about that in the next video once we can go off-road, in case I didn't mention it before. But this CarPlay system, let's, I'll show you real quick. So if you have a Jeep JL or a Gladiator or any other vehicle that came from the factory with CarPlay, it has to be wired CarPlay, not wireless. This little CarPlay box, you hook in you can do really whatever you want. My GoPro is making a horrible glare, but we have YouTube, Spotify, Netflix, Prime Video, Instagram. It's an Android interface, but we can go to Netflix here. Once you log into your account, I've already got this all set up. And as long as you have some type of Wi-Fi, so whether you have a SIM card, like an Android SIM card that's activated, whether you could have an, a hotspot on your phone or a vehicle hotspot, up here in the shop right now, I don't really, I don't get good service, but we can watch Netflix it was just on our up screen. A minute ago. It was just up a we minute ago. It. The the Wi-Fi signal up in here isn't good. Yeah. Now they have some signal, as you can tell, Netflix, we can watch 
whatever we want, just like we were on TV. So I'll put whatever's trending now. And we have Netflix. We have YouTube. Whatever you want. And the Trail Dash 3, I haven't really showed you guys that yet, but there's a lot of really cool features that we are going to go into, especially off-road. And the tune is is pretty noticeable, I will say that. Cassie, did you drive it yet? I have not. No? It's... Yeah. Next video, right? <laughs> Fourth time's a charm. The CarPlay setup is really cool. I've, I've had fun with it. The kids have really enjoyed it. We actually sat up here in the shop and watched Encanto uh, a couple days ago. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. It, on the road, you definitely do not want to use it. Uh, <laughs> even for like the maps when you're using it, it's very laggy just because of that interface. It's not as reliable as CarPlay. I wouldn't use it while you're driving, but if you're taking a camping trip with your kids and for some reason you want to watch TV. Because the McDonald's drive through line is yeah, really long. You know, it, it, it has its place. It does have its I posted on Instagram and a lot of people were like, man, where did you get that? I want to know. So I'll throw a link in the video description so you guys can check it out. It definitely, it, it has a little bit, of, it has its bugs, but overall, if you want to watch Netflix or YouTube on it, absolutely, it's, it's amazing. It, it's pretty cool. But the one last thing we should do is use the lift. Yes. Let's test the lift, see how high we can go. Just as we were about to lift it up, we had everything in place. I realized that we had to stop because the, it would be a disgrace not to have the JK consummate the brand new lift. As much as I want to try the lift, we're going to back this out and get the JK in here. The JK is definitely the heart and soul of the channel. And just like that, the JK is the first vehicle up on the lift, and it looks good. So Cassie and I were just talking uh, here for a minute. We're really going to have to mess around with all the vehicles and find the best lift points. For example, the Hemi on this is just, it added a lot of weight, and I can see it kind of sag in the front end. So we're going to have to mess around with them and find the perfect lift points. I'm, I'm happy with it. We were uh, just talking about it. We can still go up, uh, probably another foot and a half there, and there's no clearance issues over there. I was thinking, you know, originally I would like to scoot it more this way, but with this foundation crack right there, I didn't want to mount it anywhere in that corner, but I'm happy with it. We might eventually do a truss, a steeper angle truss over here so we can raise this back end. But man, this is going to be extremely helpful for all the projects, especially once we raise it up more. Actually, why not? Can you spot for me, Cassie? Yeah. But I don't want to raise it too much to where it like locks in yeah, and then I have to raise it more. Yeah, but that's but cool. I think we still have a little bit more, but that's that's my comfort zone for now. It's just crazy to think that we went from, you know, like a single carport to now we have a shop with a lift and yeah, there's still plenty of room over and here. And there's plenty of room to work on axles or rebuild engine. Yeah, or I, mean, we could, I mean we I think once we clear this section we'll be able to pull another vehicle in here. Oh yeah. No, this is awesome. This is so super cool. we we have a lot going on and I know man, I gotta get out of that light. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna change these lights out soon, but I, I wanted to talk about the lights because uh, I'm switching over to LED lights and a lot of people uh, There's the direct fit ones and then there's the ballast bypass and there's a little bit of you know Little tips and tricks I'd like to share with you guys when it comes to the best kind of like lighting upgrades But we'll do that in another video. I want to make sure this video is out tomorrow So everybody thinks I didn't die. We are still here. There's a lot of projects to do I'm gonna play around here check out the Jeep tonight because I'm sure it needs a lot of TLC But we have a lot of projects for you guys Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs> Love you guys.